Hello, I'm Beverly O'Connor, an ABC journalist and the former vice president of the Melbourne Football Club. Many of us have been watching women play Aussie rules for years, but never with a shot at the big league. That's about to change with the launch next year of the National AFL Women's League. It's a dream come true for philanthropist Susan Alberti and the young women who will now play at the highest level. This is their story. Susan Alberti's contributed, well, millions really into charities over the years. I call her your Royal Highness or your Majesty. I keep getting her down to the sharks. I say to her, come on, I'm gonna pull on the boots and have a kick one day and I'll get you some gloves so you don't break your nails. Well, I don't usually like taking my own car to the suburban grounds because it's rather a good car. Um, it's a nice Mercedes and um, I usually have a driver who takes me. The thing I love about Sue, there's no hierarchy with her. Sue has empathy for, for any young person who's gone through a difficult time and she always reaches out. One, two, three, shots! One particular player I've observed is Moana Hope. She's the leading goal kicker at the moment. Come on, Mo! She's already a personality and a character in our game and that's going to be the story of the women's league. At first pass, Susan and Mo wouldn't have much in common, but once you get to know Susan, she is as grounded as anyone you'd meet. That's it, that's She's it, that's phenomenal. It. She's been funding women's football since, you know, way back. And probably one of the biggest reasons why we're in the position that we are right now. surprise me that Susan Alberti is back in the Women's National League. I guess there's a real theme that has happened across her time in football and that is back in the underdog. Created from Smith to Ross. Until then, Great show, Savage. Though. And he's hurt himself. He's in real trouble, boys, and he's in real pain. The game will have to stop here. This is turning into a disastrous night for the dogs. The stretcher. I'm going down to the rooms just to see the players and lend them my support and you know whether you win lose or draw you should still be there for them susan's the vice president of the western bulldogs and the last time the bulldogs won the premiership was in 1954 when they were known as footscray as Whitten released from center half back it's a drop kick right down towards half forward they come but out um, that's the only grand final and i've heard so many stories about it ever since and i just dream of the day where i could be part of that celebration Rook. What's the situation? Sue is almost a dichotomy in her personality. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Mitch has broken his leg. That's it for the year. When she was a child, she was mischievous, daring, lovable, at times very, very girly. At other times when she felt like it, when she's in the backyard with me, she toughed out with me playing football. I really wanted to play serious football, but I was a pretty tough rover, I was a tough tackler, and Dad used to think I was pretty good. But then by about the age of 15, Dad didn't think it was safe for a young woman, particularly as I was playing against, well, mature men. So I had to hang up my boots at 15. That was in the 50s, late 50s. She had no opportunity really to partake in a team. There were no girls teams. I'm going to go up there and welcome them as they come down. when I couldn't continue playing football. I was absolutely heartbroken because the love of the game has been there since I was about six years old and it still continues to this day. There's long been a stigma attached with women's football, I believe. The perception that AFL football is a game for men and that women shouldn't even consider playing. I think there was a stigma around the, the game being purely played by gay women. I've always loved watching women playing football. I'd been taking notes and sneaking around, finding out what they were doing. Three. No! Why would you go there? 
I think in about 2007-8, um, I received a call from the Victorian Women's Football League. They'd just received about $6,000 from a state government grant. I mean, that wouldn't take you very far. She spoke at our lunch, and we didn't have any sponsors much, and at the end of the lunch, she goes, I'd like to give you a cheque. She handed over 25 grand. Like, we all fell off the chairs and cried, you know, because it was just emotional. It allowed us to employ someone to run the league and also just, you know, to help us to build the momentum. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I promise I won't give any secrets away. <laughs> Her support continued, and I think every state probably wished they had a Susan Alberti at that time. When I first met Susan, it was um, at a grand final, I think, when I was about 18 to 19, probably 10 years ago. And I seen this lady who, whose hair was done perfect, and I'm all about good hair. Susan might pull the boots on. No way, no way. I can't, I'm wearing jewellery. You can wear your pearls. I, can wear I just assumed that she actually owned the entire competition. She had, like, I think it was a Dolce Gabbana handbag on the floor, and and uh, her pearls. I remember the pearls because I'd never seen some in real life. I only ever seen them on a Titanic, which is weird. <laughs> When I first saw Mo and I saw all those tattoos, I thought, what the heck am I looking at? You're a beautiful young woman. Why do you have to have tattoos on your body? It's why? And I was prejudging her. That was wrong. And I, I'll admit that. Mo Hope is an outstanding footballer. And not many people really know the real Mo. Um, she has a big family, she's had challenges in her life. She's a carer of her sister. <laughs> Mo, you're getting cold out there, aren't you? still here, and he's still here. He's still here. <laughs> <laughs> like it's about the snow and it's back snowman. <laughs> I don't know, when I see Susan, I sort of see myself in Susan in a weird way because I don't feel like she's always had it, you know, on a silver platter. She's She's gone through life through, you know, she's had tough times and she's lost people that she's really loved. I was almost 18 when I met Angelo. By the time he was 25, he had his own business. Danielle arrived. She arrived two years after we were married. Beautiful young baby. No hint of anything wrong, just perfect. And I was continuing to work from home. I've always worked. I don't know what it's like not to work. Sue and Angelo, yes, they ran a very successful business, Dan Sue Constructions. Mainly was in commercial development. Angelo was a trailblazer in everything he did. Nothing was impossible. I think that attracted Sue, because that's the way she thinks. I just wanted to continue on and have more children. I had ectopic pregnancies. I had miscarriages. So I started to resolve myself to the fact that it was not going to happen. If you have one. I come from a family of 14, so massive family, you know, eight girls, four boys, no, ten girls, four boys, see, I can't even count. Just don't just go crazy. And Mum still lives in the same house in Glenroy. It's cool, good on ya. Mum needs to get her dad and they'd go out there and kick the ball. And then he'd take her around to the Oval, you know, and they'd spend endless time around, kick, kick, do this, do this, do this. He was obsessed and I was obsessed and, you know, we were two peas in a pot. I was in primary school when I first found out he had cancer. 